Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to take this relatively boring looking UI and make it much more interesting by adding interactivity. How cool is that? What's up everybody, Gary Simon here. So today is just kind of a, a relatively quick lesson uh, on a specific use case where the general idea is when it comes to your user interfaces, you know, don't be shy about adding interaction. Of course, you don't want to add too much because there is such thing as too much. Uh, there's a nice fine balance. It's a nice, there's different ways I'm going to show you technically in order to introduce movement and interaction to your user interfaces. All right, so as always, make sure to subscribe and let's get started. Now, wait one second. You're about to watch me do some cool front-end development stuff with JavaScript and CSS, but if you're rather new to this stuff, you should definitely take the front-end development career path at scrimba.com. They recently launched their front-end development career path, which is a collection of courses that cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, and much, much more, as you see. It's over 75 hours of awesome content. There are hundreds of interactive coding challenges and it's all geared towards helping you go from beginner to someone that's hireable as a front end developer. So check out the first link in the description below to get 50% off. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get started with the markup here. So nothing special is happening here. Um, actually, yeah, there is. We're gonna delete all that. <laughs> that was this pre-project stuff. Um, we have images, one, two, three, four, five. These are just from unsplash.com and empty script area we got our main css file we're using sas um you know we're using the live you know watch oh we haven't done that you have to click watch sas that's a plugin just go here and do that um type in live sas compiler and also live server reload which we're going to use now by right clicking open with live server all right let's uh close other tabs there we go and for now um, yeah, we'll just leave it like this. I didn't really make this um, mobile first or anything. This is more just to demonstrate just a, a concept of interaction and movement So on desktop. So let's go ahead. Div class container. I'm usually always just adding a container around everything. Um, we're just going to have a simple nav. Like I said, this isn't really like a full polished uh, user interface. This is just kind of like a part of a, a landing page, for instance. So we're going to have just some random... Um, list items and and really I'm just gonna paste these in because they're all different I didn't feel like just putting lorem ipsum five times um, and then after that we're gonna have a section after the nav and inside of here we're just gonna have a bunch of images all right so these are going to be referencing all the images right here so one two three four five and alt swirls I mean what was I thinking I don't know um, we're just gonna say these are all the same alts don't do that normally though. All right, script, uh, oh no, SAS, let's get this thing looking decent because right now it looks kind of like this, garbage. All right, so let's just make it real simple um, and get this ready to rock. So we're gonna have body here, inside of a body, mar margin zero, always setting that to zero, height, 100 viewport height, font family, my favorite of the last several months is Mary Poppins or maybe just Poppins. And I already have installed, so I'm not going to bother importing it. Image, uh, we're just going to do with 100% visibility. So we're going to be hiding these initially. Um, and they're, they're only going to be seen, you know, once you actually hover. Position is going to be absolute. Um, and for now, we're going to leave it like that. Although there will be a couple more properties going forward. Um, our container is just going to be a flex container. This is going to be two columns. And then we're gonna have a margin of 5M on the top, zero, 5M on the bottom, um, and on the left, 5M units. And position will be relative because we're gonna be making the images position absolute. So that's what we have so far. And then we're gonna have uh, our section. And our section is what holds those pictures. We're just gonna make it absolute um, width here, position will be absolute and right will be 10 M units. So we're gonna push it over from the right by 10 M units right here. All right, why is it that it's these two are shown and the other ones, oh, it's because uh, they're absolute, that's why. Okay, I was wondering what is happening. Nav, uh, we're gonna have a margin right of four M units, position's going to be fixed. Uh, width is gonna be 800 pixels and text align will be left. 
All right, so that's what that does. Our unordered list. All right, so we're gonna have a list style type of none and also a width of 10 m units. And our list items, all right, text transform is going to be uppercase. We're gonna have a padding of 0.8 m units on the top, zero on the right, 0.8 on the bottom, and 0.8 there on the left. Cursor is gonna be pointer. So right now we're just working on a little uh, navigation. Um, border radius, so I, oh man, I forget the name of the resource for these border radius, radi blah, border radiuses. Let me get up a new window, go to my history, because I don't see, I don't want you people seeing what exactly <laughs> I'm looking for. Um, is it border? Ah, found it. Fancy border radius. All right, so this is kind of cool because it generates a border radius based on um, this nice little visual interactive thing that we have going here. Um, and so that's how I generated the following properties right here, all right? Um, actually, you know what? Let's leave that off because I want this to be pretty much simple um, for the time being. Position is gonna be relative here. Let's see what we have so far. All right, this is what we have. Nothing, nothing fancy. Um, and then I, I think that's good to go right there. All right. So did I have none on there? What am I doing? That's supposed to be hidden. Look at me just using properties that don't even exist. There we go. Okay. So now we're going to come back to this and make it more interesting. But for now, let's switch into JavaScript mode where we're going to make it so that when a user hovers over these items, it just shows a picture associated with it. All right, so there's many ways to do the same thing in JavaScript. So the way I decided to do this is to create a const of list items, document.query selector all, because we have multiple uh, list elements or list items. And so we wanna get the list items, all the list items that exist on this page. And then we're also going to come in and also have photos. <laughs> what is that? Photos, hands in the wrong position. Document.query, selector, all. And we're going to get all the images. All right, so now we got both of those. What we wanna do is iterate through all the list items. Now, in order for this to work properly, you're gonna have an equal number of images compared to your list items. So we're gonna do list items, and we're gonna go for each, and we're gonna get the list item and the index, and then Fatter of function, and we say list item add event listener. So on each of the list items it finds, we're going to add an event listener, and that is going to be mouse enter. And then inside of here, and let's close that up properly, we're going to say for each one of those, we're going to reference our photos, and we're going to get the specific. Uh, index for those, and we're going to say dot. Uh, we could do uh, a few different things. Uh, we can do dis, uh, uh, we can do style dot uh, visibility and visible. Let's just do that. Style dot visibility equals visible. Let's see if this works. It, <laughs> it doesn't work. Do we have an error? Document, oh, I, I didn't, boy, I'm typing too fast today. All right, now let's try that. All right, so what's happening is these are all just kind of showing up and they're, they're, the other ones are behind it, all right? What we're gonna do instead of doing a style is just use class list dot add, and we're gonna have one called intro. So let's come down here and for intro, we're simply gonna do visibility visible, all right? And by adding a class instead of doing the style.add or, or style.visibility, it allows us to easily just add multiple properties, which we'll do. Um, so that's gonna show them, and, but now we need a way to hide them when the cursor goes off. So what that means is we're going to take uh, this and copy it 
and this is going to be mouse leave. All right. So then we take our class list and we simply remove the intro. So hopefully you understand what's happening here. List items uh, for each. So it's going to go through all of these list items. This is index zero, index one, two, three, four. Same thing, then. index zero, one, two, three, four. So when this one gets hovered over, this one, which is defined right here, we add a class. And so it, it goes through those very quickly, obviously, and, and um, listens to all those. So let's try this right now. All right, very cool. You know, not, not the most exciting thing. So let's add movement. So now we're getting to the meat and bones of the tutorial. Let's add in some type of interactions here. And we could do it on our list items. And we could also do it on our images here. So um, let's make it so that when you hover over these, the uh, actual photograph moves in relation to the movement of the mouse on the X and Y axis. So the way we could do that is we could say list item, once again, add event listener. And we could say mouse move, all right? We're gonna take the event and that will give us access to all this information. What am I doing? To all this information um, based on the mouse movement when it's over this a particular list item. In this case, since we're iterating over all of them, it'll be over all five. And then what we can do, and by the way, let's just do a console log of E. And then that way you can see kind of how this works if you're you know new to this stuff. So I clicked on the wrong thing. All right. Um, if we get up our control shift I, you'll see every time we move our list item, it's telling us screen X, screen Y, client X, client Y. We want client X and client Y. Client X is the X position when I move it left or right, and Y is client Y position. So what we can do is we could say photos.i, which gives us our specific correct image based on the list item that's over, um, that's being uh, hovered over, style.left. And this is why, um, so this is the same thing as a CSS left uh, property. And in order for you to use that, you have to make sure those photographs are position absolute, which is which they currently are um, in our CSS file. So style left equals e.client x, that's the property that we saw in the browser. Um, and then what we'll do is maybe we'll just put times 0.5 and we can adjust this value to uh, to different degrees to really affect how much movement occurs. And then we also have to add pixels at the end uh, in order for this to work. So let's just try this first and see what happens. Look at that. Isn't that cool? All right. So let's do the Y. So client uh, top is going to be Y. All right, so let's try this. All right, you, want, you know what? If you don't want it to follow exactly, you can kind of give it a reverse effect. How? Put a negative here and a negative here, or minus sign. So, Now it's going the opposite way, if that's something you want. Now, right, right off the bat, I kind of don't like how on the X position, these are all, especially these ones that aren't long images, uh, how it's real close to the top. So what we can do is simply add on the Y, we could just put a plus 100. So that's gonna push everything down away from the top of the browser. Isn't that cool? All right, so now we have some interesting movement. What if also when these come in, we can use the clip path property and animate it so that it does some sort of interesting reveal animation. So we can do that as well. So um, let's go to our CSS and this is where we're going to focus on our list items a little bit more. So our list items, what we can do is uh, we're going to transition. Well, first let's add the, uh, Oh, wait, 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 wait. 
I'm I'm look I'm in the wrong area. Look at me. We want to make it so right here. There we go. So there's another um, tool to use. Actually, let me just get up on this one. The tool is called Clippy CSS. The CSS Clip Path Generator. So what I'm going to do is say, let's say for instance, um, we want the images to come around 50% like in the middle at the top, and they're going to reveal themselves kind of like this. This isn't perfect. I, I will show you the actual CSS property right here. So it's 0, 0, 100%, 0, 100%, 100%, and 0, and 100%. Now, actually, this is what it's going to reveal to. And this is the same as, let me show you, doing this. Just like getting everything expanded out here. As you can see right now, that's all the values I have. Now, if we want it to come in, or we want to start it here, so where you can't even see it, but we want to animate to this position, so it'll come from the center and out, then we add uh, this property up here inside of our images. So, right there. 50% zero, 50% zero, 50, 100%, and 50, 100%. All right, um, so now they're gonna be hidden by default. Uh, they're Actually, they're not gonna be hidden, if I'm correct. There's no animation taking place. So what we need to do is transition the clip path property, let's say like 0.3 seconds. Now we should have an interesting sort of, I need to get my, my, <laughs> my things in order, an interesting sort of animation. Isn't that cool? So you can really do really cool stuff with this. Let's also take it a step further and make it so that when you hover over these, there's some sort of interesting, cool CSS-based um, animation occurring and maybe something with a little bit of a, kind of like a SVG sort of thing. There's a lot of different hover effects you can do. I'm just gonna show you one of them. Um, so let's take our list items, all right? So we're gonna do this whole border radius thing. That This right here again, was generated with that first tool that I showed you. Um, and what we're gonna do is um, transition the border radius property uh, one second, and we're gonna use and before, and we're gonna say position absolute, content, nothing here, width is gonna be zero, border bottom, it's gonna be two pixels solid black. And this is also a, a kind of like a second element that we're going to add in, kind of like a strike through that's gonna to animate. Top is gonna to be 1.45 M units. And transition is gonna be the width of one second. All right, let's see what happens here so far, if anything. No, nothing is happening yet. I, yeah, I know why. We'll get this worked out in a second. Now we're gonna do, this is only gonna work on the hover because we only want and before to work on the hover. So we're gonna do hover. So when the list item is hovered over, we're gonna say a border pixel of one pixel solid gray. And we're gonna animate from this right there to this property. Now what the all I did, just to show you, to get to these two different properties is I went and used this you know, I started here, I copied it, and then I moved this over here, and this over here, and maybe this over here, and you know, something like that. And that gave me this. So we're basically animated from something that's, you know, a starting position to an end position. Um, this here should work now for that first effect. See how it changes? Let me make this a little bit larger. Ah, we don't want that to happen. But there's a cool sort of just interesting line-based animation. Then we can say, and before, which means once we're hovering over this, we're also gonna target our and before and just give it a width of 80%. Because the width is zero, that's why we don't see this strike through effect, but now we make it like 80% or so. Now, look at that. It's a little bit much, and something that's kind of like artsy. Um, 
but this is more just a, a practice and interaction and different really cool things that you can do uh, with JavaScript in CSS based animations. Awesome stuff. Alrighty, hopefully you enjoyed that. You learned some new things. Now, what's one thing that's very exciting to me is I'm going to be really focusing heavily on this type of stuff uh, when it comes to intermediate to advanced UI design and interactions. Uh, and so with that said, I'm going to be going like a deep dive into 3JS very shortly. I'm um, learning a lot myself, so I'm not quite ready, but I look forward in the future on this channel to a lot of 3JS and GSAP content. All right, I'll see everybody very soon. Goodbye.